A wonderful morning to one and all. Hope you all are doing well, children. Can anyone name the three branches of government? You all are absolutely right. The three branches of government are the legislature, executive, and judiciary. And in today's civics class, we are going to learn about the union executive. That is the executive at the central level in our civics chapter three. The union executive. Before we begin to learn about the union executive, let us have a look at the structure of the union government. Children, the union government means the central government, and it comprises of the president, who is at the apex, the legislature, and the executive. The two houses of the parliament, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, are under legislature. and you all know that when any bill is passed in both the houses it requires approval and sign of the president to become a law on the other hand the executive comprises of the prime minister and the council of ministers even the president is also a part of the union executive children the president the prime minister and the council of ministers are executives and are also a part of the legislature they are responsible to the legislature for their actions and policies now let us learn about the president who is the nominal and constitutional head of our country children according to the provisions of the constitution the president is the supreme head of the state and the office of the president has the highest honor and prestige and represents the republic of india all executive powers of the state are vested in the president by the constitution in reality the prime minister and the council of ministers carry out the functions of administration and run the government in the name of the president that is why the president is also known as the nominal head the prime minister meets the president regularly and informs him about the conduct of administration and keeps updating him about new laws and policies children the president has a right to seek such information as the nation is run on his name and he or she has to protect and safeguard the interest of indians and to keep an eye over the functioning of the government now let us know who is eligible to become the president and how the president is elected in our country india children do you know that the president is indirectly elected by the people of india the common people do not vote in the election of the president like in the lok sabha elections the president is elected directly by elected representatives of the central and the state legislatures the group of these members of the parliament and the members of the state legislatures is known as the electoral college the tenure of the president is 5 years and the person contesting the presidential elections should be an indian citizen and must be 35 years old children the person elected to the position of the president has to take an oath while accepting the post according to the oath the president bears the responsibility of protecting the constitution and ensuring that the government runs as per the constitution the president governs in accordance with the advice given by the prime minister and the council of ministers let's know what happens if the president violates any act of constitution the president is known as a constitutional head children as the responsibility of protecting the constitution is shouldered by him but if any act of the president violates any law of the constitution then the parliament has authority to remove the president through the process of impeachment any one house can lay the charge of violation of the constitution and the investigation of the charge is carried out by the other house the resolution has to be passed by special majority that is two third majority 
of both the houses of parliament. The constitution has given many powers to the president to carry out his functions effectively since he is the supreme head of the state. Let us look at some of the functions of the president. The president summons the meeting of parliament, dismisses or postpones the sessions of the parliament, sends messages to both the houses. Children, even he can dissolve parliament after the tenure of the parliament gets over or sometimes even before the tenure. Children, we all are familiar with the law making process and we know that the bill is converted into law only after the signature and approval of the president. Even the president appoints a prime minister and other ministers on the recommendations of the prime minister. The judges of the Supreme Court and the High Court, Governor of States, Chief Election Commissioner and other important officers are also appointed by the president. Children, the president is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. He appoints the head of the armed forces such as general, admiral and air chief marshal. Decisions regarding war and peace are also made by the president. The president also has some judicial powers. For instance, he has the power to reduce the punishment, increase or decrease the sentence of a person and in special circumstances, the president can also grant pardons on humanitarian grounds. The president has the power to declare emergency in case of a crisis situation or for the national security arising in the country. Children, during an emergency, the president is given the right to curtail civil rights such as the freedom of movement, speech and expression of the people. The three kinds of emergencies mentioned in the constitution, national emergency, state emergency and financial emergency. In the absence of the president, the vice president carries out all the functions of the president. The vice president is elected by members of both the houses. That's all for today children. Now read this part of the lesson with the help of the study cloud links shared in the PDF file to understand the lesson better and then complete your notes. Thank you children.